Welcome to our today's special webinar called Do's and Don'ts Working in a Team with QF Test. Uh, since all of you know QF Test is a tool for test automation, which can automate any Java based application, any web based application, and also any Windows based application. And during this uh, implementation of tests, you will run into some issues when you're working in a team. And in this webinar, I'm trying to explain how we can work around this, some uh, tips and tricks and some hints, how to like uh, don't uh, run into such issues when working in a team. I have some, uh, let's say, presentation sli slides and also we'll show you some uh, demo stuff directly in QF test. So what do we have for kind of problems if you're working in a team together? One thing is we are editing most probably simultaneously uh, throughout our test suite. So one user is changing something in a test suite, another user is changing something in the test suite, and then later on both are committing their changes in the version control system, like SVN, Git, or whatever you prefer. And then you run into issues there, you get some merge conflicts, something like this, which are We'll explain later on how we can solve this and also how we can um, provide some workflow that we don't run into this much issues. Another problem could be that we have multiple test environments, we have different configurations on these machines, we need to take care that each and every machine has the same configuration. <coughs> and another thing could be if we're working in a team together, that we have a lot of test suites created through our journey with QF tests. And then if a new uh, coworker comes into the team and tries to understand uh, already created tests, and even me as a person, if I want to understand my test I created, let's say last week, half a year ago, then it's sometimes hard to understand what is going on in the test if the test is not documented as well or not designed this well. We also talk about this, then we have um, can have some shared libraries which provide some functionality throughout your test. And this shared library is used in each and every of your test suites. And then if there are some changes in the shared library, you need some ways to provide those changes to all of your tests. Another point is that the test architecture is growing by the time, so you have a lot of tests, a lot of test suites, which you need to maintain. And then um, you need to have some path through to like provide all the changes and also don't run to, into any issues with uh, getting merge conflicts with a large test architecture. Then if you have a lot of, as I said, a lot of test suites, um, it could also ha happen that you have redundant scenarios or redundant components in this test suites because, for example, you created one test in one test suite, there you recorded the components, recorded the procedures or created procedures, and another colleague of you is creating more or less the same scenario or the same procedures in his test suite or her test suite, and then later on you end up in your whole um, test suite construct with, let's say, two or three test suites, which basically holding the same procedures in there with more or less the same functionality, but just with a different name, something like this, or even because the coworker didn't, didn't know that there's already a procedure existing which provides this and this functionality. <coughs> and also, if we are talking about version management, as I said in the beginning, we may run into uh, conflicts during uh, merging changes. Doesn't depend, uh, or it de also depends if you're working with a lot of branches. I will also show you later on an example how to work with several branches and then commit in your changes and how to work with this approach. Okay, these are mainly the problems if I'm working in a team together. Um, additionally to this, there may be arise some other problems specifically to your team, but this is, let's say, the main problems which may occur and also occurred. Uh, we found out during our support sessions with customers. 
how can I solve those problems? It's an, let's say the most important question. The first thing uh, we always recommend to do let or to communicate in the team. If you have a smaller team, then it may be easier. If you have a larger team split into several departments throughout uh, the whole world, then it may be a bit more complicated, but this is always the main key that you communicate in the test. So let's say you have some daily stand-ups or something like this, then the colleagues are discussing who is creating, who is providing which functionality in QF tests, especially if you're talking about uh, procedures which are used throughout uh, several test cases, then there should be some clear approach who is designing this and this procedures, who is designing the helper procedures, some stuff like this, and also who is uh, like refactoring, maintaining the stuff, because if each and every colleague of the whole team is changing each and every procedure, this may be a bit problematic. And also one solution is how to organize a test suite. I will show you later on a kind of schema how you could split up your test suites um, and organize the test suites and several levels based on the application you're testing on. And also I will explain you how to work with several test suites so you can like split the parts you're testing in your application or even split the functionality of your procedures in several test suites. And if you have several test suites, then it's um, easier to maintain them because then you just have a smaller scope of procedures you're editing and then the um, let's say the time slot where you're, in, you're interfering with another colleague is, is limited in this case. So the problematic uh, issue with like getting merge conflicts because another co coworker changed the same procedure or the same step in the test suite is then limited because each and every of the coworkers just uh, editing smaller parts of the whole test uh, environment. I will also show you how to link test suites uh, together so we can like have one base test suite and this one is including another one and then it's on top we have some special test suites or special test cases. I will show the, this uh, just afterwards in a short sample. And with this, uh, let's say working with several test suites and also linking those test suites together, we can even then split our tasks. So let's say one colleague is um, doing this and this specific task in this sub-module of your application and another coworker is testing some other part of the application so they don't interfere because they're testing completely different parts. And if the tests are then finished for the specific parts, they put the created test cases in some, let's say, nightly running test suite or whatever. And then this test is running each and every night, and then the test, uh, the coworker or colleague is creating another test case. And if the test is finished, it's just uh, moved to the lightly running test. So we get a growing test base uh, with all your tests which are working, and uh, other tests which are just in, in creation or in development are just separated in different test suites. I will just show you this in some short samples. Let me just switch to my machine then. <clears throat> I guess a lot of you may know our example test suites, which can be found under help example explore sample test suites, where we have this uh, car config test suite, which is uh, implemented for Swing applications, for web applications, for Electron, for JavaFX, and also the other engine specific um, application types. In my case, I would just use this Swing car config suite, which looks like this here, where we have some dependencies, some test sets, some test cases in there. We have here some packages. In this package are located some procedures, some procedures for starting and stopping the application, some dependencies. And down here we have our windows and components which hold all the necessary component information. So this I took as a base and this test suite I split up into several test suites. So basically I created up here four test suites. 
one test suite is simply just holding the base procedures. Base procedures in this case are called all the dependencies, which may not be necessary just for some tests, maybe also important for other tests. Then this package here for starting and stopping the application. This procedures uh, are located in the space procedures. Uh, you see here there are no windows and components in here because I split it up all the components in one separate test suite. This test suite has no procedures, no extras, so it just holds the, uh, the components. And besides this, the base procedures and the components, I have another test suite which is called main window procedures which is basically holding all procedures uh, connected to the main window of this application. And also down here we have no windows and components because those are stored also in the components QFT. And on top of this we have this test main window QFT which is actually the, holding the entire tests. Inside here we have this test sets for testing all the parts of the applications. Actually down here we have no procedures, no components because all of them are stored in here, <coughs> which simplifies uh, the handling a bit more. Um, right now if I have this test suite here, I have the dependency reference up here which is called dependencies.sot started and reset. And if I try to run this, then right now with this initial stage I wanted to show you here, this run in, runs into an issue uh, because the dependency is not unknown here because it's not existing in here. And this is because I split this up into several test cases or several test reads, sorry. And in this test main window I need to tell you test where my uh, dependency is located in this case. So the dependency reference is called dependencies SOT started and reset. And this one I moved to base procedures.qft. Here we have this dependency SOT started and reset. And if I want to use this uh, dependency from this uh, base procedures QFT, the only thing I need to do uh, is go to my test suite where I want to use this uh, dependency up here and up here we have this uh, part or section called include files where by default this qfs.qft is included which is our default library I will talk later on about it and also here I can add via this button I can add another row and if I go to this row and hit then the edit button or just double click I can select which test suite I want to include. In my case, I simply want to use this um, base procedures.qft because in here I have this um, dependency in there. And if I run, run to run this now, or I can just double click or right click and then locate call locate dependency if to see if the reference is working now. Right now, QF test is jumping to the space procedures QFT. So this is then linked correctly. Also, if I double click on it, it jumps to it. So right now I could run this. And QF test is bringing up my application. It's still failing of some other issues because I still need to fix something, but at least the dependency is working in this case. <coughs> and I can use it from main side here. We still got an issue here if we run this. It brings up the application but then it tells us that no comp component for the specific ID is found and this is right now because in this test suite here I simply just included this uh, base procedures QFT and inside here there's somewhere some reference on some component like here and if I double click on this QF test cannot locate this component because I moved all the components to my components.qft so what I additionally need to do is tell the space procedures where to find the components 
this, I can do it in the same way. I go to test suite up here, I add another line and edit this one and say, I want to include the components. So I have right now three levels of includes. We have the components. This one is included in the base procedures, which I have in here. And then this one is included by test main window, which is actually in here. And I need to tweak this a bit more because uh, I also want to use the procedures out of here, like for example, using some um, menu procedures like opening up here the info dialog or stuff like this, which are included in this main window of procedures. So instead of including this base procedures in here, I simply modify this and say, I want to include the main window procedures, which is this test suite here. And since this test suite is also relying on the base procedures, I could say up here, sorry, I also set base procedures dot QFT. So right now I linked everything together. So I have my test case. The test case is then linked to this test test suite here, which is holding the let's say window specific procedures. This one is then linked to the base procedures, which is holding the dependency, the start and stop. And this one is then linked to the components, which are included all, all here. And I also can show you this on a, on a slide, which is basically this one here. So basically I'm linking together each and every of my, of my test suite levels. In my case, I have this uh, base level. In the base level, I have my dependencies, my could be my login procedures, my starting procedures or stopping procedures to bring up my client or stopping my client. All these procedures I would save in such a base level test suite. This one is then included uh, by the one which is holding all the procedures, like all my main window procedures to open up the menus opening up dialogues, closing dialogues, all the specific stuff, which is in my uh, procedures test suite. On top of this, I have then a uh, test case level, which is then including all my um, procedures out of this level here. And even then on top, I could have some, we call it scenario level, where it could be like putting together several test calls, like let's say, you have several test cases. In this test case, you have your finished test and then a scenario level could be then, for example, called nightly test, where you say, I want to run this test case out of this test suite, this two test cases out of another test suite, and then another one out of another test suite, and simply put this together in some kind of scenario which you're running then on a nightly basis or whatever. So this uh, are the, let's say, errors on this side. We also have uh, errors on this side here because all of those test suites, as we said, are dependent on each other. Right now, if I go back to my um, test suite design here, I have my test uh, main window. If I double click on this one here, I can jump to the dependency because the dependency is found in the space procedures. And I could also say in my test case, I have here some procedure calls to open up um, some vehicles. Like here we have some procedure calls for main window menu reset, which is simply hitting file and reset, which are located in my main window procedures. If I run this, even those should be working. Also here, I have a select model, select special, all of those are working. So right now I can have this test running here and it's working as expected. Even though I have no procedures itself in the test main window QFT itself, all the procedures are located in the other test suites. But since I included them together, QF test knows that all the procedures we are looking in here 
are located in the main window.qft and this is done via this include up here. But uh, we don't have the defin definition, let's say the other way around. And right now if we we'll do some modifications in here, let's say I modify the name of this dependency here, like dependency is right now called, named uh, SAT started and reset, which is the dependency I'm calling in here. And if I do some kind of refactoring and rename this procedure to SOT started and reset for car configurator, for example, configurator, like do some simple uh, refactoring. Then QFTest brings me always up this dialog here and asks me if I want to update all caller references. And then I simply hit the yes button. So QFTest is looking for all the references. It's already updating some references in here. And if we jump to these references, which were updated, we can see this uh, references is in here and the other one which was updated is in here. It's just some nested dependency reference directly in this base procedures QFT. But if you look in our test main window, the dependency reference is still named dependencies.sot started and reset because QFTest by now doesn't know that this test suite here uh, is connected to our main window procedures test suite or even to connect it to this test suite. What I could do now is he go to the test suite up here and say here I have several dependencies or we call it uh, reverse includes uh, in former times. I could say here I tell QFTest that this um, test main window is a dependency or dependent test suite. So whenever I rename something in here, QFTest is fetching all the test suites out of this dependencies part here and looking if there's some references in there and then updating the references in there. I can quickly show you this. Um, if I would put it in here and say we have this test main window in there. Let's save it. And then right now we have SOT started and reset. And if I also do this backwards here, Let's just move to the initial stage, which was like this. So this is right now the reference up here. And if I rename this now to, let's say, for ABC, whatever, thank you test already asking me to update the references. I hit the yes button. Right now we see this two references in the base procedures get updated. And also in test main window, we now have the reference updated to SOT started and reset for ABC, which is my new name now. So by uh, maintaining this uh, dependencies or, or reverse includes, give test knows which SVs are connected to each other and also updates this, uh, de this, this references. But since this is, uh, let's say, a main, quite a maintenance effort because you need to know or need to add each and every test suite in here which are connected to the space procedures, uh, we came up with another solution. So we simply undo this once again. So we have to stay same stage like beforehand. <coughs> and to simplify this, what we can do in QFTest, we simply go to File and select New Project, where we can say, I want to create some kind of project. In my case, I'm creating this project in the folder, which is named Thomas in here. So what QFTest then does, it's creating some uh, QP, let me just jump there. It's creating this QFTest.QPG file. Um, which tells QFTest all the files which are in this folder are connected 
to, to each other by via a project. And also up here we see there's a project called Thomas uh, opened right now where we have all our test suites which are located in this folder. If you would have some subfolders, also those would be included in this project view here. I can switch this project view on and off up here. I can also do some opening, closing up here, some refreshing, some rescanning of the test suite. I can also filter the test suites up here if I want to search for another one if you have a large test base. But this is not an important thing for us here. The important thing is that since we defined this project, we don't need to maintain this uh, reverse includes here because QFTest automatically knows each and every file which is in this project uh, is connected to each other. So now if I go to this dependency and rename this again to SOT started and reset for car config and hit the yes button then QFTest automatically knows that this test set car configurator demo in test main window is connected to each other. Could be the same if we have, let's say, 20 test suites and I update my dependency, then each and every of those uh, test suites would be updated with the new name. And I, do and, and I don't need to maintain this reverse includes anymore. I simply create a project and in the project QFTest uh, automatically knows that all the files are connected to each other. We just undo this because the name was correct as we had before and there's some additional um, let, let's say advantages of projects. If you define some kind of projects then you could do a search and in a search you could then search throughout the whole project which gives you even more power but since this is not some kind of uh, topic of this webinar here we'll simply skip this just as a reminder of you this gives you some additional functionality let's say okay so with this we have um, linked all the test suites together and as we have seen in my uh, example here i also split this up into uh, several parts. So I have one test suite which is holding all my components, another one which is holding just the base procedures, the third one is then just holding the main window specific uh, procedures like all the procedures connected to this main window. We could also have another test suite which is connected then for example to everything which is connected to specials or another one which is just for this specific dialogue. So we can split it up into several test suites and then out of this, we have another test suite, which is then simply holding the test cases itself. And the test case itself is then simply calling procedures out of this or uh, other test cases. Which brings us to some kind of design, or let's say development structure, we call it here. <coughs> As I explained, uh, we have some kind of base level down here where we have uh, commonly used procedures like starting SOT, logging in the user, uh, all the dependencies like we have seen here. Then on top of this, we could have some procedure level which contains procedures for the parts of the SOT like some procedures connected to the accessories, to the vehicles, whatever, depending on your application. So basically you split your application in several modules and then for each and every module of your application you have a, a test suite which is holding the procedures for this specific module. On top of this the same we have uh, several test cases. One test module could be for example creating all vehicle tests. Another one could be then modifying all accessories which is then just testing the accessories part. And on top of this, we could have several test scenarios with even some external data source, some data drivers, some database fetches, whatever. And then here you stick together all your several test cases and put them together, for example, some smoke tests, some nightly tests where you want, for example, run two tests out of this module, three tests out of this module, some really critical or specific ones. You simply put together this in some kind of test scenario and then you create it, therefore you create another test suite. In the test scenario, you could use then uh, 
entirely new test cases and simply call procedures, but you could also say you have test cases and inside this, you're simply using test calls and call already existing tests, which are defined in here. Okay, and then, which brings us to the another one, which is more or less connected to this one. It's just another um, view on on this uh, structure, because it, while creating this uh, test suites or procedure suites, we call the, the lower parts here, uh, we have several roles and responsibilities. So let's say we have some uh, colleagues with, with which have uh, a good QF test knowledge, also some knowledge about scripting inside QF tests, some knowledge about resolvers, some knowledge about, uh, I mean, some, let's say, more advanced features of QF tests. Those could be um, given the role to create the procedures down here. Let's say they create some common procedures, some dependency with some fallback mechanisms if there's some unexpected errors occurring, or this really, let's say, te technical stuff or even more advanced stuff they could create in the common procedures. On top of this, also via users with good QF test knowledge, they could create procedure modules for each and every of your module. They provide all the procedures. And on top of this, or just be, uh, above this layer here, we could have uh, other testers or other colleagues which don't necessarily need to have, uh, let's say, really deep QF test knowledge but they have a better SOT knowledge. So they know their application in, in, to, in whole. They know all the specifics of the application. They need know how to test the application a bit better. And then they simply creating their tests in here and inside as test modules, they are simply using all the procedures the other co-workers or colleagues created down here. So they're simply sticking together or putting together the tests using this already created procedures. So it's like some um, some playbook. They're just putting together all the all necessary procedure calls. They're simply just defining all their entry values in the procedure parameters. Also, if they want to compare something or check for some values, they're using already existing procedures down here. And if there's no procedure existing for some really specific technical stuff, they simply communicate with just those guys here, which may help them and provide them some more advanced uh, procedure. And then they can simply use it up here. The same up here, the test manager or whatever uh, could be then creating some test scenarios, let's say some smoke test scenarios, some nightly test scenarios, and simply defining then which data source are used for this test some semi-production data, whatever. <clears throat> so you can also like split your tests or your specific tasks uh, into testers which dif with different knowledge of QF test or with different knowledge of your SOT. And also this part here, I mean, for individual tester, it is worth separating tests and procedures for maintenance reasons, because it's easier if you have, let's say, three, four or five test suites, which basically calling the same procedure. So I won't recommend to copy and paste the same procedure in each and every test case. I would simply create one test suite, which is holding then all the procedures and all the five test suites are then using all of these procedures. Okay, just. And also we have another view here. This one we had already like linking the test suite. We talked about this dependent file. And since we want to remove this, uh, this main additional maintenance effort here, we introduce projects which basically do the same like we're showing in this uh, scheme here. And the reference is automatically found throughout the project because this is done via QF test itself. So let's quickly go back to this one here. We talked about this one. Uh, it's jumping, sorry. We talked about uh, working with several test suites, like linking those together, splitting off the tasks, working with the projects. Also, we have in here the windows and components and also the test suite organization in here. 
what what do we do if um, we're working in a team together and we have, for example, this test suite created in here and we want to maintain this in a in a Git repository. Then let's say we open this up here. We have here our repository, which is holding our four files. And then let's say we modify something. Oh, in my case, I modified already something. I modified in here. I put in all of those includes, which are not in my repository yet. So I can simply commit those changes. So here I added an include file. I also added another include in this file. And since QF test, uh, this QFT files are all, all XML based, we can simply use this in any version control system and check in the changes of well, which we done in QF test. There's no, let's say, visual view in QF test where you can see the changes. But since this is XML based, uh, at least for additional stuff or simply changes, it's quite easy to see in this uh, diffs here what was changed. So in my case, I simply add this to to the repository. So let's say we stage this. My uh, Git tool here is in German, but it's more or less the same in English. So we have here then a commit and push button. Let's just modify the commit message. This would be some added includes something like this. So we push this. We push this to our repository, which is working as expected. And then this is now my repository called Thomas. And then there could be another coworker of mine also using this test cases. And this one would be also have a repository. Right now we have another user in here. And this user also would have a QF test uh, open with the same test suite, so basically FED already cloned this repository. And then let's say in here, the includes are missing right now. He would include something like components dot uft, something like this. And save this and also then or maybe add some additional procedures whatever and then this co-worker of mine right now called another user in here it's also trying to commit his changes in this case i don't need this uh, backup files here simply commit this one and also i say edit include file we're committing this. And we're also pushing this. And now we get an issue because there were some changes already on, done on the repository because I committed as Thomas, I committed also my changes. I can say here, I want to pull these changes. But then I see here, Error could not apply uh, because there is some merge conflict in there. And then the merge tool asks if it should solve the merge conflicts. I can then open up my merge tool. Uh, which hopefully opens up someday. And someday loads my files somehow, not yet. Would be too nice if it would open up my files. Uh-huh, uh nice one. It crashed, but let's just open this file um, 
in the editor because my merge to crash, we see here there's some changes already done and there's base procedures. We have some locals and remotes. Um, why is it not in here? Oh, one sec. I like the live demos. <laughs> Um, let me simply close this one, which most probably crashed. Uh, open it up again. Let's see if it changes is something. Why is it not showing my changes? Um, hold on a sec. This one. Why is it not showing up my changes? Um, just uh, let's just skip this. What should be displayed in there? That's basically I changed the same uh, the same line in my um, in my file because one changed the line with the include and set the include to this. Um, component ssx.qft because it had some typo in there and the other one changed the one to components.qft which is let's say changing the same line um, in the file so therefore it forcing some uh, uh, some git git conflict or some merge conflict in this case and if you have it on the same line there's always some let's say communication necessary because you need to decide which one was the correct one it would, would be components or would be this uh, compu components ssx.qft, which is then quite easy um, to to solve. So simply decide to use this change in here. Unfortunately, I cannot show you my my diff tool because it's simply crashing or not showing the changes here. But it should appear that this one and this one is changed, and then you can decide which one was changed. And you simply use the correct change and then commit this back to your repository. Easy way would be if you have a new test or new procedure created, then it's simply added to the test case. And let's say to to limit the parts where you're forcing this uh, commit or merge errors is is easier if you like split up your test case and uh, if you split up a test or procedures in several test cases or several test suites. Because then, let's say the, the the scope where you can interact with or run into this merge issues is is a lot lower. Because if I have a one uh, test suite which is simply just holding all the procedures connected to the menu, and I have another test suite which is just holding the procedures which are just connected to some other part of my application, and if I do then some changes in there, then it's yeah, quite unusual that if I change something in the menu test suite that this may force an uh, merge error in another test case, which is completely running on an entirely other different part of my application. So therefore, it's the most important thing is uh, to separate or like split your task or split your test suite in several parts of your application to limit this um, interference or uh, via version management. One thing I've also shown in here, this Windows and Components in here, where it's separated here in one specific test suite, which I have called a components.qft, which is holding all my components in there. 
And then if I have some changes in there, some components are changing later on, then just one coworker needs to go to the test suite, modify his changes, directly committing it back. And another thing we always recommend if you have um, a lot of test suites and you have test suites which are running on a nightly basis and you're trying to create new test cases, then I would always try to create new t test cases in an entirely new test suite. Let's say we have this in here, just switch up the project view. And let's say we have this test main window in here and then we create a new test suite, which we name test dialogues or something. And inside this one, since I know this is connected to my other test cases, I also do this uh, additional include. And in this case, I say I use this uh, main window procedures in here, which has the advantage that now I can simply use all of the functionality I have already in there. Like I can use everything out of here, can use also everything out of here. So I can simply drag and drop this dependency uh, to my new test suite. Drag and drop can be do, uh, done inside one test suite, but it could also be done throughout several test suites. So we simply go up here to switch to the test suite. Then we go in here and we simply drop it up here. Another hint in here, if you have a lot of procedures or procedure test suite like this ones, then you can also say, I want to go to this one and right click on it and say here new window which simply opens up this procedures in a new window which i can then put next to my additional screen or additional test suite window and then i can say i have here my procedure then the first thing what i want to do is for example reset the entirely application let me just open up this node and then I simply drag and drop it out of another test suite, which is just an easy array instead of like switching to this test suite, then copying it from here and then um, pasting it here. Then you can simply drag and drop back and forth each and every of your test steps just with this uh, entirely separate window. And inside this test case here, I could try then to record some steps. Let me just bring up the application once again. <clears throat> and here I could say, I go and go to this dialog and let's say go to this dialog. And then this is my opening up sequence in here. And then I also have this click to okay, which is this one. And then I could say, uh, decide this one, I name, click OK. I transform this to intro, into a procedure, which I have then in here, which I could use then in my test case up here. I simply drag and drop up the steps here. Right now, I also drag and drop the sequence in here which right now has this sequence name recorded at this specific date and also have some steps in there, which I wouldn't recommend by default, but right now since I'm more or less running out of time, I need to sp speed up it a, bit, it a bit. So this could be some open menu and then stats dialog, something like this. We could also create a procedure out of this and then put it in here and if I want to like make this procedure, which I created in the specific test, want to make this available for other testers, because this procedures may be also necessary for other test cases, not only for this specific test case I stored in here. I could say, I cut this one up here and put this to my main window procedures. Let's say put it in here. Then QFTest asks me to update all references, which is done in here. We go up here. We see then uh, the references updated in here, 
which is now main window dot click OK. So this is still working. If I would replay this, then this test case is still working with this uh, click OK procedure in here. Uh, but one thing is, since I just cut it and pasted out a procedure, the component information for this OK button is still located in this test dialogs.qft. So the problem would be if I have another test tester which is creating a new test suite. Let's call it new tester. And also this one knows that there is some main window procedures. Yes. And inside here, this tester is also knowing there is some procedure to click the OK button, which is inside this dialog here. And if I replay this here, ah, most probably wrong dialog that opened, but the error which is showing up here, the target component could not be determined. This is because QF test uh, doesn't uh, has just this uh, components in here. And if this is just some, let's say, temporary com uh, test suite where I create my tests and later on I switch it to another test suite. And I forget to move also the component information, then this component information gets lost. And another test case, which is then just relying on this click OK, won't work later on. So therefore, we just switch this back and also undo this one here. So we still have the procedure in here. Yes, undo all streets once again. So this was my initial state in here, I created this new procedure and I want to make this procedure available in other test suites. Then I simply go to my main window procedures, go to file, click import, and then I select the test suite where I need to import something from. In my case, I created something new in this test dialogs QFT. And here I can say I want to include import all procedures or components. In my case, I, for example, just want to import this click OK. And down here, QF test asks me what to do with the components. So QF test is automatically importing all the necessary components. And also taking care that there are no duplicates imported. So I simply select this option, hit the OK button. And right now, all the, the procedure itself is uh, imported in here. And if I click to the component, then we also can see the component information is located also in here. And since in my case, I decided to store all the component information in the components.qft, I simply go once again to this one. And inside here, I say I want to move all the components. And then the components is moved to my components test suite. Inside here, I just have the OK button. And this one is then referenced in the components test suite. So with this import mechanism, QF test automatically takes care that all the components necessary for new procedures are moved to the correct test suite. And also duplicates are avoided. All the stuff's done automatically by the import mechanism. So it's located in here. And this I would always recommend instead of cutting and copy and pasting it back and forth the test suite, because then you really need to know what you're doing on. So this is the import mechanism. We also recommend using the standard library qfs.qft because in this one there are already helpful procedures to like work with QF test for each and every of the uh, engines. We have some uh, helper procedures in here which you don't need to modify or to create. Here are some utils package. If you, we have already provided some mechanisms to getting a date or whatever, some random numbers, some random values. All the stuff is already implemented in here, so you don't need to like invent the wheel on your own. You simply use this qfs.qft, and this one is also simply included in each and every of your test cases. If you create a new test suite, this is automatically included, so you can use it throughout each and every of the test cases.
<coughs> so this was this. Um, the file system and versioning, as I said, or shown beforehand, to let's say the limit the issues or the merge issues which could occur there, we always recommend to use a smaller test suite and implement some design like this here. We can have several procedure level test suite. And inside this one, then for example, a new test tester is importing his test cases. So this is main, mainly a fixed test suite, which are no changes so instantly done by each and every of the coworkers. Only if there's new procedures imported in there, then a coworker just gets the test suite, imports his new procedure in there, and directly commits the test suite back into the version control system. And then the other testers could rely on this one, simply fetching the changes, and then they have already the changes in there. If we have or are working with uh, with Git or any other version control system, and we have working with several branches. Then let's say one is creating the branches in here, then um, putting in his changes in here. Then it's always important, or it's uh, not just important for working with QFT files. It's anytime important with versioning system that you rebase the changes of the on the of the master branch, and then. You simply, uh, each and every time you modify your test suite or work on your test suite, you need to rebase beforehand so you get all the changes by the other colleagues in there. And then you always should try to merge quickly in your changes because if you have a branch which is long, uh, living for a long time, then it's even more, more a hassle to merge this in later on because then it's more common that you run into merge conflicts because if you have a branch which is living, let's say, two weeks, then the possibility that there could be some merge issues, uh, it's way higher than if you have a branch which is just existing one day, two days, because in these two days, the other coworkers are not changing this much, in, especially in the same file at the same location. So therefore, I would recommend to always uh, rebase uh, as often as possible and also merge a branch as, as quick as possible. Okay, since we are running out of time, I don't know if there are some questions already in the chat window. Otherwise, um, I would close the session at this level. If you have some questions afterwards, right now, then just drop it in the um, in the chat window. We can also stop the recording then. We can also unmute your microphone and directly ask some questions. We have some some minutes left in our session and we could try to, to talk about this directly afterwards. And if you don't have this much time, then we can also discuss this via email later. Thanks for your attendance.